Hey everyone, Shane Combs, SVCSportsZone.com, coming back to you again here on SVC Sports Talk Plus. This is our three-part volleyball series. Part one is going to be the setter position. I, I know everyone's out there saying, shocker, Shane's going to start with the setting position, uh, but you've heard me say in the past how important I think it is. You know, there's so many times that you can avoid the passer in the back row with, with a serve or, or the way you attack. You can, you can kind of move your block across the net. Uh, against the elite hitters, and plus the elite hitter can only be up there three out of six rotations. That setter is the one that's taking that second ball and running that offense the entire time, and I, and I just think there's such a value to that. And, and again, that's kind of why my eye continues to go there when I look at this. So let's let's go ahead and break down the setter position. I think there's a lot of change in the SVC to the setter position. And when I look at graduation last year, obviously the one that jumps out at you is Alyssa Still at Huntington. We talk so much about a thousand assists or fifteen hundred assists throughout a career. You know, Alyssa was, was was a young lady that went over seven hundred just last year, averaged about ten per set play. Um, Amaris Cooper at Southeastern is another one that comes to my mind. Uh, had some elite hitters around her. She stepped in, did a nice job, up over eight per game. Um, uh, Josie Williams at Westfall, dynamic player all the way around, setting half of the time. Had some incredible numbers as well. Now, Westfall does have Claire Latham back that gives them some experience. And when you talk about someone like a, a Phillips and a Mullins and, and company across the front row, that's going to be very, very important to them trying to repeat. Uh, how will Huntington Southeastern go about it? Uh, it's too early to say. Until I get out and see things, I, I don't want to speculate too much. But when you have hitters like a Megan Steele and, and a Hannah Longhe, how do you get them involved? Obviously, that's going to be a big, big factor for those, for those two particular schools. Two schools you'll hear me talk about a lot uh, throughout these, these three clips will be Zane Trace and Adina. Uh, these two schools are crazy deep. And well, how will they go about it? Last year, they went with the 6-2. I know Zane Trace with Allie Bennett and Kenley May, that they, they probably combined for up around eight or nine assists uh, per, per set played last year. And, and, and they have a long list of hitters you'll hear me talk about in some future clips here. But, um, you know, will, will they go the same way? I don't know. But, but again, they have a lot of options there. And those two obviously did, did a nice job a year ago. Same way with Adina. It was, it was Michaela Lovely and it was Ari Dariff. Would they go the same way there? Would they change up? I'm, I'm hearing different things throughout the offseason. Again, I, I'll have to, to see it and, to, and, and see the rotation to see what it looks like. But, but all four of those young ladies – on two rosters that are going to be crazy deep, certainly give both of those teams a chance to compete in the top half. And I guess when I move down the list, I, I want to quickly talk Paint Valley Python. Uh, I, I did have a chance to see Paint Valley scrimmage the other night. Last year as a freshman, Avery McFadden was a 5-1 setter. She was a top five in terms of assists per sets played uh, across the SVC. And this is a Paint Valley team I do expect to be a little deeper across the net in terms of options, in terms of hitting the volleyball and attacking. This year, what they did the other night is they utilized Caitlin Potts in a 5-1. Uh, Avery was doing more of the passing at the, uh, at the libero position and, and so forth. So that's something to keep an eye on. Not only are we hit by graduation, we also are having some changing within coaches' decisions and how they're going to tweak rotations and so forth. Now, Pike did... Python's one, uh, Ava Little was someone I really liked last year, an athletic lefty. Um, if she's able to step in and do that job for, for Coach Lytle there, I think that could be an interesting thing. That, that athletic lefty, as we know, across the front row live gives you a little extra option taking the second ball over. She's plenty long and athletic enough to get involved in your blocking schemes and so forth. So that brings me to Uniota, and that's where we find our most experienced setter, our most accomplished setter in terms of all the returners in Ava Eldridge. Uh, Ava last year, really throughout her career, kind of utilizing a lot of 6-2, spotted some 5-1 rotations at times when they went through some illness late in the year. But you know, she, she's a young lady up over 500 assists a year ago, right around six per set play. Uh, Ava has good hands, Ava has good knowledge of, of the game, good vision. Um, she, she has a, a long list of hitters as well. I'll talk about more in some future clips. Uh, there's a young, a young uh, player named Sophie Coleman who, again, will they go 6-2, will they go 5-1? Again, these are all things with, with new coaches, um, new situations. You're, you'll hear me talk about in a future clip. These teams are going to have to figure out how to pass the volleyball too, so that can impact uh, some, some movements there. So that's kind of where we sit with the setter position. 
I'm anxious to get out and see it. Now keep in mind, if you didn't hear the announcement today, no SVC preview. So uh, this is going to take a little longer to figure out. Going to try to get around with some practices, get around with some uh, scrimmages. Uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll get started and we might find out together in terms of what these rotations really are. So make sure you check out over the next couple of days uh, some future clips. Going to talk depth across the net. Going to talk about it starting with the pass as we break down some of our back row defenders as well. So keep following us here with these SVC Sports Talk Plus. Uh, then later this month, obviously, we're ready for Season 10 of SVC Sports Talk. So uh, we'll always try to keep it 100% SVC 100% of the time.